Some years ago, I got real interested in making a lot of money in a hurry. I think this occurs to everyone at some time or another. And uh, my idea was to uh, find it. There was a lot of it in the hills of Arizona. So I started to become a prospector and go through all these hills and look for it. And I never did find any gold to amount to anything, but I sure found a lot of interesting stories about gold. One set of hills in which I went are called the Superstition Mountains. And in these particular mountains, they had a man by the name of Jacob Waltz. And he went up there one day and he found this big mine in all of these caves, and they were stacked right up to the top of the cave with gold. Millions of dollars worth of gold. And uh, he decided to claim it and use it, and that's exactly, of course, what he did. And before he could do much about it, someone shot him to death in Tucson or in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, they saw this gold and they decided they want a little bit of it, but when they took the gold off of me, he only had a few thousand dollars worth of it on him, and no one's ever found the rest of it. But uh, several people have tried. There's a fellow named Adolph Ruth, and he set an expedition up and went out there to find it. And uh, the last time that they, when they finally found Adolph, he didn't show up for a couple of years, and they stumbled over a skull with a nice little round hole right in the skull, right in the center above the eyes. And uh, they checked out the teeth, and they found out that was Mr. Adolph Ruth. And so obviously the only gold that he found was the gold in his teeth as he lay there for a couple of years dead. And so people really got interested about this particular mine and the superstitions, and they called it the Lost Dutchman. And uh, I had a friend named Charlie Williams who took a picnic up there once, and uh, as often happens up in the mountains of Arizona, he got overtaken with a blizzard. And uh, he was hiking around, and he'd left uh, the picnic down below, and so his family came back into Phoenix to get help. And they searched for a week, and they couldn't find him because the blizzard was too bad in the mountains. But at the end of that time, he finally staggered into civilization, and uh, he was kind of out of his head a little bit, but what he had in his pockets made a lot of sense. His pockets were loaded down with long gold sticks, each one of them very valuable. This is the way the Spaniards used to smelt gold when they, after they would uh, take it out of the mines. And he had about $50,000 worth of gold um, in his pockets and so on, but he was never able to find the mine where he was hanging out for about, well, he was there for about a week. When this blizzard, this great snowstorm hit, he went into this cave, and uh, after he got in there and started, uh, got a little fire going from some brush and began to look around, he saw all this gold stacked up there. And so he put some in his pockets, and when he finally came back down, but he never was able to find the cave again. As a matter of fact, they have a club called the Don's Club, and once a year they uh, go up into the mountains and try to find this cave, and no one's found it yet. I had a friend who was a photographer in Tucson by the name of Angelino Marino, and uh, he had a nervous breakdown. I don't know how people get a nervous breakdown taking pictures, but he did. And... Uh, so the doctor said, what you need to do is to hike. So he started hiking in all these mountains. And uh, he'd bring home pretty rocks and put them on his mantelpiece there from these hikes. And he had one rock that weighed about 10 pounds, just a nice pretty rock, and he put it up in his mantelpiece there. And he had some friends over one night, and one of them was a prospector, and he looked at this thing and he said, this is gold. And uh, he said, can I take it down and have it checked? And they took it down and had it checked, and it's worth $70,000 a ton. And he said it was all over the ground, but he's never been able to find it before he picked up this rock since. And he's had about three nervous breakdowns trying to find it. <laughs> I have a friend who's a judge in Prescott, Arizona, by the name of Dan Williams, and he goes deer hunting up in the Pinal Range every year in Arizona. And one day he came back with some paperweights, some little round black marbles. They were real pretty black marbles, and he just picked them up on the ground and got lost. And he said uh, he was finally sat down. He'd like to have picked up the chunk he sat on. It was almost a perfectly round chunk of big black marble. And he said, as far as you could see, for about 200 yards was just this big black marble all over the top of the ground. But he did find these five little ones, and he brought them back, and he used them for paperweights. And the first client that came in after he got back was a prospector. And he said, Judge, where'd you get these things? And he hoisted these paperweights, and he said, well, I lost up in the Pinal Range, and I picked them up there. He said, Judge, I hate to tell you this, but this is about 99% silver. And, of course, it was black because it had oxidized. 
And since then, the judge has given up deer hunting. He spends all his time trying to find where he was lost on his last deer hunt. Because there's uh, millions of dollars worth of silver just sitting on the top of the ground there. Well, there are a lot of interesting things. There are a lot of treasures to be found out there. I did my share of walking around, but I never found any. Then one day I got to thinking, it gets tiresome hiking around on those hills, it would be a lot easier to find some treasure somewhere else. And since then, I've been digging in the Word of God, and the Scripture says that Christ is the treasure of wisdom and knowledge. And so if you're going to have success with God, uh, there are all kinds of success, but if you're going to have success with God, you have to start at the cross, and you start by believing in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 